All right, so Greyzone and Warfare has been flying off the shelves with over 400,000 copies sold in just the last two days. I snagged a copy myself, and if you're like me, you're probably itching to optimize your gaming experience. I think it's pretty widely known that the 7800X3D is the best gaming CPU out there right now. It's been proven time and time again that cache is greater than frequency for gaming, and the 4090 is still the GOAT GPU for now until the 5090 drops. I think there's a lot of info out there about CPUs and GPUs, but what about RAM? Does it really make a big difference in pushing your gameplay to the next level? Stick around and let's find out. But before we jump into it, don't forget to throw a nade at the like button like it's an exfil camper waiting in a bush at your LZ waiting to steal all your hard earned loot. All right, so here's the setup I'm using. It's a 7800X3D, pretty much maxed out on all the specs. Got a 4090, 32 gigs of DDR5. It's 8000 CL38 rated sticks, SK Hynix A dies. So top of the line, everything pretty much. RAM or random access memory is where your CPU stores crucial game data for quick access. Opting for faster RAM typically results in smoother gameplay, reduced stuttering, and quicker loading times for textures and game assets. One of the reasons X3D chips have garnered such acclaim for gaming is their substantial cache memory. Positioned above RAM, cache allows the CPU to access data even faster than it can from RAM itself. With ample cache, X3D chips minimize the need for accessing RAM in most modern titles, even those with demanding requirements. To ensure maximum CPU dependence, I've dialed down all the graphics settings to the lowest possible in 1080 for this test. So I ran my memory in three different configurations. First at stock 4800CL40, second at probably the most common timings you'll find, 6000CL30, and then I kicked it up to 7200CL34. Keep in mind that in order to reach speeds above 6400 on AM5 chips, you need to run the U clock at half the speed of the MEM clock, so you'll notice that there. Looking at the numbers, there isn't a significant difference, but there is a visible difference for sure. So basically here's how it breaks down. The FPS increase from DDR5-4800 to DDR5-6000 is around 2.22%. The increase from 4800 to 7200 is around 7%. The increase from 6000 to 7200 is about 4.79%. The price difference from 4800 to 6000 is probably like 100 bucks versus 115 bucks if you want to find a good set. And then the difference from 6000 to 7200 is maybe another 15 bucks. So we're talking maybe around 240 FPS at the worst for the cheapest RAM and around 255 at best with the best RAM. In terms of the experience itself. For me, the difference between 240 FPS and 255, I mean, I can't even tell. If there was no FPS counter there, I would not be able to tell what configuration I'm on. So it's really up to you whether or not you want to spend that extra 30 bucks, get a few extra frames, or I mean, even if you get the slowest RAM possible, you're going to get pretty great performance with an X3D in this title. So there you have it. Does RAM speed really matter for the 7800X3D in Grey Zone Warfare? Well, yes and no. From my testing, the performance numbers are all in the same ballpark. It ultimately boils down to whether you prioritize the best value or the absolute best performance possible. Regardless, the X3D carries here. It offers solid performance across the board. I hope this video has been informative, helpful, or entertaining in some way. And now that we've covered RAM testing, stay tuned for my upcoming graphics optimization guide, which I'll be releasing soon. As always, thank you for spending some of your valuable time here. It means the world to me that you chose my video as I continue to work towards my dream of creating content full time. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for your comments, likes, and subs. It's time for me to get back to the grind, and I'll see you in the next one.